Now that we've talked about structure and what structure means, let's talk about structured data. So here's a definition. This is my definition, although I've based it on lots of other sources. Um, my definition of what structured data means. Structured data, I would, I would submit to you. Structured data is data organized in fields and according to a data model and optionally in a database, although often when we're talking about structured data, we are talking about databases. Now, remember in a previous video, I was talking about fields as roughly synonymous with elements. I used the example of Mad Libs or a form that you fill out at the doctor's office or a job application or something, right? You've got a fill in the blank space and you write in your name or whatever it is that you write into that space. That is the field, the element, if you will. And then the value, of course, is whatever you write into that space. So you've got in a form that you fill out, you've got unstructured data, but you also have some structure to the data because you have a particular logic to what fields exist and why those are there in the first place. Now, if you have a logic of what fields exist, right? why are you requiring certain pieces of data, and then you can map out the relationships between those fields or elements or entities, whatever term you want to use here, then that's a data model. If you can map out the logical structure of your data, that is your data model. Unstructured data is none of those things. Unstructured data is usually just undifferentiated blocks of text. Think natural language writing. Now, to be fair, natural language writing isn't just a big blob of text, right? Often it's divided up into paragraphs and chapters and sections and whatnot. So often there is some structure there, even if it's just formatting. But we'll come back to that in a moment, right? Of course, there are a ton of just natural language texts on the web. And many, if not most, documents on the web are unstructured, do not have any structure to them beyond just formatting. And that, of course, is why technologies like text mining exist, right? to help extract meaning and help impose a certain amount of structure on otherwise unstructured texts. Text mining, though, is a topic for another course entirely. And if you're interested, I would point you to the information science program nearest you because most information science programs will have a course on text mining. However, I'm drawing this distinction between structured data on the one hand and unstructured data on the other hand. And actually that's kind of a false dichotomy because everything has some structure to it, even if it's just formatting and even if it's implicit, right? Lots of things have no sort of imposed structure, but underlying them, there is some structure if you think it through a little bit. And so by way of illustrating that, let me show you Wikidata. Now Wikidata, if you are not already familiar with it, is a project of the Wikimedia Foundation. The Wikimedia Foundation has lots of projects. The one that everyone is familiar with, of course, is Wikipedia. But there are lots of other projects that Wikimedia has undertaken um, to organize the knowledge of the world in a variety of different areas. 
Wikipedia, of course, is attempting to build an encyclopedia. I shouldn't say attempting, has in fact built an encyclopedia. Wikidata is a Wikipedia-like project in that it's editable by anybody, but its purpose is to allow users to contribute data, but also to help impose structure on all of that data. So let me show you some of this. Let me scroll down just a bit. And what we have here is list of properties used in Wikidata entries. So let's take a look at that. And if I scroll this up a bit, we have a list of top level entities here, right? That set is a list of top level entities that exist in the world. Things like person and organization and events, right? Very high level concepts of entities that you can identify in the world. Yes, there is such a thing as people in the world. There are such a thing as people in the world, excuse me. So let's take a look at person, the person entity. Now, the person entity has the following characteristics. We have date of birth, we have place of birth, we have birth name, we have date of death, etc., etc. A person, the entity person, has all of the following characteristics. And as we've seen before, each of those characteristics has a data type. Right? Date of birth takes the data type time. Place of birth takes the data type item, where a place, a location, would be considered an item. So let's take a look at time, for example. So if you want to specify a date of birth, say, for a person entity in Wikidata, the way you represent it is time represented by ISO 8601, which we've looked at before, the encoding scheme for representing dates and times. So what Wikidata allows you to do is if you have a data set that you then contribute to Wikidata, you can, or some other user of course, can identify all of the named persons in that data set. And once a named person is identified, that entity will have the following set of characteristics, one of which is going to be date of birth. And then date of birth is represented using this data type. And the way you represent data in that data type is ISO 8601. So you get this ability to impose structure on what otherwise might be an unstructured data set. Now, like Wikipedia, of course, Wikidata is collaboratively edited, so anyone can contribute a data set, and anyone can help update the set of elements and data types that exist in Wikidata. And the idea is, like Wikipedia, to have it be as large as all of human knowledge. The idea is to impose a certain amount of structure on the entire universe of human knowledge. And then, of course, some of that structure gets folded back into Wikipedia itself. And let's take a look at some of that. This is the Wikipedia page for my institution, the University of North Carolina, at Chapel Hill. And I'm sure you've seen these sidebars on Wikipedia pages before. You get this sidebar here for UNC. And this itself is structured data. You have fields and you have values, right? We have the field motto and the value Lux Libertas. You have the field students and the value, however many students there were the last time that, val that number was counted. Now, the motto, for Carolina probably hasn't changed in, you know, over 150 years. 
uh, the number of students presumably changes semester to semester. So this value is going to be updated fairly frequently. But the point is, what we have is fields and values, structured data embedded in a page that is otherwise just a big block of undifferentiated text. There has been some structure imposed on data about this entity, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and that structured data is now embedded in this page. So now let's talk a little bit more specifically about how this plays out for databases and metadata.